Evening all, <clears throat> and welcome back to the Woolgar Test Facility, commonly known as the WTF. Right, this evening I've got something to show you which is a little bit off the beaten track. Uh, not quite electronics, not quite uh, uh, jet engines. And uh, I doubt very few of you have seen one of these before, actually. Uh, in my um, <clears throat> day job, when I'm not fixing uh, engines or building stuff electronics wise I work as a vascular surgeon um, so I thought I would share with you some of the uh, tech that we use to repair uh, blood vessels uh, it's a bit like plumbing uh, in human beings I suppose uh, the principles are the same and uh, what I'm going to do is go through with you some of the uh, uh, tricks of the well, tricks of the trade I would I would I would guess you'd call it or some of the uh, bits and pieces we use this thing in front of me here is actually um, a vascular graft, an endovascular graft, and I've got one or two other grafts to show you uh, just to give you an idea of um, how these things work. But before I carry on with that, I'm going to have to sort of draw you a picture and just to sort of explain to you when these are used and what they're used for because I can't really do that without uh, doing a picture. So I'm just going to get a pencil and paper and we'll be back in a minute. Right, before we have a look at these grafts in a bit more detail, I thought. I would just go over a bit of a, the anatomy and um, <clears throat> the indications for when we use these things. So the graphs I'm going to show you this evening are basically used for repairing um, aortic aneurysms. Now for those that are not familiar with these, they're not an uncommon condition and it's, uh, the way I describe it is it's a bit like having a hose where the wall is perished and the, uh, the wall of the aorta, which is this main artery here, balloons out um, and the problem with it, as it gets bigger, uh, because the blood is obviously under pressure there's a risk that the whole thing can burst and you know um, <clears throat> you can bleed to death. Uh, they're fairly uh, they're fairly common in, in men over 65 years old not not uh, seen as frequently in women um, and uh, there are there are various programs to screen for these so that uh, you catch them before they actually rupture. So there's um, there's two different ways we can repair one of these um, Obviously, this is the disease part of the artery. We can either repair it by putting what's called a stent graft, basically reinforcing it from the inside, and we usually go through the uh, femoral artery. It's what's called a sort of a fairly minimally invasive approach, or an endovascular approach, and deploy a, a stent graft, uh, which is what I'm going to show you in a minute. And the whole idea of this is that um, this graft sort of sits in the aneurysm like that and it's a it's basically a very large covered stent and a stent is a, is a steel uh, framed uh, piece of tubing usually covered with something like polyester <clears throat> so effectively this um, stent basically seals the aneurysm and uh, the other alternative the other way of repairing them which is <clears throat> in the traditional approach is we basically open up the patient so this is <clears throat> this is the uh, this would be the abdomen, so heads up there, uh, two kidneys, obviously the legs down here. We open up the abdomen and we basically have to uh, stop the blood flow temporarily by clamping the aorta, and then <clears throat> replacing all of this with a a uh, dacron uh, graft, which is basically like a piece of polyester polyester tubing. And what we'll do is we'll again we'll show you uh, one of the what one of those looks like uh, in a minute. So. Um, that's more or less um, when we use these these devices. Uh, the the <clears throat> stent graft's been around for what uh, 25 years thereabouts, and the traditional open operation, which we use, which we which we use a when we use a, a dacron or, or, or polyester tube graft. Um, I mean th that that procedure has been around since the uh, since the late 50s. So, uh, what's the pros and cons of each? Well, obviously, this type of procedure is a much lesser procedure. It's you know the patients are usually in, you know, just for a couple of days. It's done all done via the femoral artery, um, and so it's obviously a much lesser procedure. Uh, the drawbacks with this stent graft is that the patients do have to be monitored uh, for for basically for the rest of their lives, usually with scans, an ultrasound scan every year, to make sure that the seals or, there's no, or the graft or the endo um, graft doesn't develop any problems uh, because obviously if this you know if the seals here fail um, <clears throat> the aneurysm will be get, will be pressurized again and we don't want that uh, 
The other procedure with the, with the open operation, uh, which um, <clears throat> which we do, uh, is it, it, I mean that sort of that has stood the test of times. But it's a big operation. You know, we have to um, you know we have to clamp the the aorta. Uh, there, there's lots of problems. You know, with that. You know, it can strain the heart. There's a risk of kidney failure. Problems with the bowel, uh, so you know it's it, and it doesn't. It certainly does carry a higher morbidity and mortality. <clears throat> um, but the, on the on the plus side, uh, you know, if you have an open operation, that will usually last you for the rest of your life, and you know you don't you don't need to have the rigorous follow up that you have to have with the uh, the stent graft. And and the other problem with the stent, I, which I didn't mention, it does carry a significant reintervention rate. So if you have one of these, there's chances are you may need further you know further intervention either a, a further stent or if the aneurysm continues to grow you may need to have the whole thing redone with a conventional repair uh, so so that's when we use these um, <clears throat> these devices so it's mostly for abdominal aortic aneurysms so what we'll do is we'll have a close look at these in a bit more detail um, <clears throat> what I've got is a couple of stent graphs which we can have a look at and see how they're put together and uh, I've also got a couple of um, <clears throat> Dacron graphs as well, which again we can, uh, you know, have a closer look at. Right. Okay. So this is the um, <clears throat> first of the graphs we're having a look at. This is the stent graft. It's commonly known as an EVAR, intervascular aneurysm repair graft. Uh, this is actually a. Um, uh, I believe it's manufactured by a company called Cook. I think it's the Cook Zenith device. <clears throat> but uh, the way these things are put in, obviously, you know, imagine trying to put this through the the, the <clears throat> femoral artery uh, in its expanded state. Obviously, it would be very difficult to do that. But these things are uh, all compressed down into what's called a delivery device, which is round about six to eight millimeters in diameter, which um, uh, it is passed through the femoral artery after it's been exposed. Uh, some people do it without even exposing the femoral artery in the groin. Um, but it's obviously it carries a little bit more risk. So the standard approach is just to ex is what we do is we expose the the uh, common femoral artery um, just below the groin, or the groin uh, ligament, the inguinal ligament, and then uh, um, pass um, the uh, <clears throat> delivery device into the aorta. And all this is done under X-ray control, so you can see exactly where you need to re to place this um, this stent. So if we have a look at it, the as you can see, it's um, it's obviously made of uh, a, st a type of steel. This is actually called nitinol. Uh, it's, a, it's basically an alloy, uh, stainless steel, probably nickel or something like that. Um, and once this is in the human body, it, it pretty well lasts forever. It doesn't rust or anything like that. And the it's got a sort of a crisscross arrangement. You can see that down the bottom there. Um, and each of these uh, struts is actually hand sewn on uh, with a polypropylene uh, stitch. So if I can just bring it a bit closer, the camera can just focus on that. I think you might just be able to see that. And the, the other thing you notice as well, if you look at the the top of the stent graft, um, you'll see that the uh, steel struts that are sticking out uh, actually have uh, small hooks on them or barbs. And the whole idea of this is that uh, once this thing is delivered into the aorta, just below the, the renal arteries, the kidney arteries, uh, when when the when these initially they're compressed in like so, you can see that. And then what happens is that when this thing is released, it all springs out, and then these barbs then catch onto the inside of the uh, aorta to prevent it from moving around. And you've got, if you look at the, if you take a close look at the bottom end of it. So you've got one leg that's longer than the other. So what normally happens is that um, uh, once the, the 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 two smaller tubes basically sit in um, where the aorta splits into what's called the iliac arteries, which basically go down into each leg. And uh, normally the shorter one uh, is used for is well without getting to without getting into too many um, uh, details. This this short leg would basically be made up of another separate um, uh, stent, a smaller one. So you so the whole thing sort of sits um, just above where the aorta um, divides or bifurcates, and uh, it sort of sits like a, a pair of trousers, for want of a better word. So um, 
Now these things are, this sort of thing would probably set you back, I don't know, four or five grand, maybe more. And uh, obviously it requires quite a lot of logistics, you know, to put one of these things in. You've got to have x-rays. Some people do them with radiologists. Um, a lot of vascular surgeons these days actually do this as, as part of their sort of normal routine. Um, and the, these things are put in quite regularly, these endovascular grafts. And, you know, by and large, they are pretty good. But as I said, they do have the drawbacks that I mentioned originally. And you can just imagine, um, um, what, you know, with, with the blood pumping away, uh, you know, this is a man-made device. It's quite rigid. And uh, you can imagine that these struts uh, would be prone to failure. And certainly in the earlier devices, that was a problem. It's, you know, it can still happen with these newer ones. But the way this is designed, you can see there's very little... Um, you know, all these things are designed to flex and move, and, you know, that's how it would be in the human body. Right, so that's the stent graph. What we'll do now is have a look at some other uh, slightly different uh, uh, vascular graphs. Just rummaging through all these boxes and everything, all this different packaging, and uh, which all these graphs come in. All this stuff is sterile, uh, and it's usually opened in sequence by the theatre stuff. But what I did notice was the instructions. Um, I guess if you had to read these halfway through the operation, then uh, I guess things won't be going too well. But anyway. Right, the first one I've got here is a um, what we call a trouser graft. It's a, what's called a bifurcated um, Dacron graft. So this is made of, the Dacron is basically polyester and um, this is a, a bifurcated one, a graft or a Y graft, uh, call it what you will. And this is this would be used to replace um, uh, <clears throat> repair an aortic aneurysm. Or sometimes, uh, for instance, if you had a blocked up aorta or the um, arteries going to the legs were blocked off for, for whatever reason, um, usually it's from uh, atherosclerosis, which is what your granny used to call hardening of the arteries. Uh, then you might use one of these to do what's called an aortobifemoral bypass. So basically taking a bypass from the aorta to each femoral artery. Uh, so these things are quite soft. They, um, they're made of sort of polyester. Uh, <coughs> you do get uh, woven and knitted ones. I can't remember which one this is. The, 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 uh, the, I think it's the knitted ones that aren't, that, uh, that aren't used anymore or the woven ones. I can't remember which. Um, and this... Um, this graft, in order to prevent it from leaking, because obviously you imagine if you, you know, if you um, plumb this thing in, to, let's say you try to plumb this into say something like water, for instance, you, you'd expect it to leak, and and similarly with blood, but uh, it doesn't actually happen like that. So this is actually coated with um, gelatin, um, which basically uh, means that when the, when you uh, when the blood's running through it, it doesn't all sort of pour through the uh, the fabric. Um, in the old days, when they first Bought these things out. Um, what you had to do is, in order to sort of make sure the thing didn't leak, you had to uh, tap off some of the patient's blood into a dish, which usually meant opening the aortic clamp just for a few heartbeats. And you'd collect about, I don't know, 200 mils. Then you get your graft, and then you dunk it in and and, and pre-clot it. Um, but we don't have to do that anymore because these things, as I said, they're pre-coated with gelatin, to uh, so we don't have to do that. And but basically, what you do with these is that. Um, you literally, uh, once you've opened up the aneurysm, you literally stitch this thing in. You can use um, PTFE or polypropylene sutures, and you literally just just suture the thing in. Um, and uh, you know, once the blood, once the uh, blood's run through, it, um, uh, you know, a couple of times, it doesn't bleed. It all sort of seals itself as part of the natural um, hemostatic process that occurs in the body. So um, it actually works quite uh, quite good. And the, one of these, I said, will last uh, quite a long time. And you can see they're quite stretchy, so that you can then, you know, when you st when you stitch one of these in, you can then pull it down to where you want it. Um, the the other tend the other thing with these, they do tend to, after a few years, they do tend to expand, um, which is usually not a major problem. Um, you know, it doesn't usually require anything doing about it, but uh, that's just what happens to Dacron. But usually, usually when you put one of these in, you know, this will last the patient a long time. Um, and it's usually, you know, it's um, <clears throat> either an autobifemoral bypass or an aneurysm repair with one of these. You know, it's uh, 
it stood the test of time and by and large it's it's you know it's good the only potential problem is obviously if one of these gets infected if you if you're unlucky enough to get a an infection in an aortic graft then that's a every vascular surgeon's nightmare and we end up having to take the whole lot out which uh, for the patient is really um, a major procedure so that's um, that's a bifurcated graft so we've got a smaller piece of dacron there this is an eight millimeter graft which uh, is often used for uh, sort of general purpose bypasses um, you might use this in the bypass where you want to say uh, go from one femoral artery to the other a so-called femoro femoro crossover graft so that's what you'd probably use that for um, yeah I mean it's just a similar sort of thing but smaller com as as the previous one and then lastly what we got here um, this is actually just being a bit closer if it will focus get it in frame that's it so this is a uh, PTFE graft uh, this is about six millimeters in diameter and this type of bypass you can see it's actually got rings on it again let's see if we can get it to focus and this type of thing you would use predominantly in in the lower limb you know in the leg somewhere like that uh, again if you were doing a bypass of, of of the femoral artery down to another part of the femoral artery further down in the leg um, <clears throat> then you would use something like this and uh, these these things are they they're not as good as using you as the patient's own vein um, <clears throat> Um, but sometimes if you know if you haven't got a vein for a bypass then you might consider using this you know piece of uh, um, a prosthetic graft such as this and this is a PTFE graft um, you know it works reasonably well it's not brilliant when you want to do a bypass to below the knee the uh, the patency in other words the the the, the uh, time for which it stays open isn't isn't terribly good um, so um, but uh, as I said, there's not really much to look at there. That's just, uh, as I said, it's, 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 this is just PTFE. It's, it's the same sort of th material that, you would, that, a, that a plumber would use to repair the, uh, to thread the, um, uh, the, the various uh, pipe work that you use, you know, if you were repairing the kitchen sink, similar sort of uh, material. So vascular surgery is basically plumbing, but on the human body. Um, so if, so uh, yeah. It's just a little tad more complicated, but it's more or less that's more or less what it is. Just basic plumbing, right? So I hope you uh, enjoyed that. This is a little insight into uh, what I normally do for a living, rather than uh, mess around with engines and radios and electronics. Anyway, thanks for watching.